This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. The bay. The worn-down foothills of the Appalachians stood off in the distance, the perfect setting for everyday sunsets. In a nod to American Appalachia, on the front porch near the steps to the deck, Wartman had placed a life-sized wood carving of a moonshiner, a single-barreled shotgun in his right hand menacingly pointing out to the road while a jug of white lightning was clasped in his left. Wartman also owned a large 20-acre plot, 287 Portapique Beach Road, that ran south almost down to the water. It was nothing but a tangled tract of scrubby trees and bush. He had assembled two other adjacent parcels of land, which faced onto Orchard Beach Drive. He had visions of doing something big with it all someday. On his fifth and final plot of land, Wartman had constructed his own entertainment center, workshop, and museum. The design was likely cribbed from a New England barn, complete with a cupola on top. It was a big building, fully covering a 3,200-square-foot concrete pad. It had a loft and bedroom upstairs. There were no grand vistas, no water views. The rising waters weren't going to get this building. In any direction, all one could see were trees and more trees, not a majestic one in the bunch. It was his blind, his snug. A banner touting Miller Genuine Draft hung behind the bar. It was framed by two diagonally mounted five-horsepower outboard boat motors, odd sentimental trophies. The dusty taxidermied head of a moose with a modest rack of antlers oversaw everything from its spot high above. The bar sat six. A bubblegum machine stood by for those who might want to chew after their brew. Off to the side, a small blackboard read, Lisa's Bar, written in chalk. Some of the locals who had seen the place up close described it as exquisite. One was truck driver Eddie Creelman. It was really done up. It was beautiful in there. It had everything a man could ever want. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Unfinished chipboard stuck out here and there. The bedroom was finished with drywall that hadn't been taped and mudded. Wartman fancied himself an accomplished carpenter and jack-of-all-trades, but filling cracks in drywall defeated him, and he always wanted a better price than any professional would accept to clean up the mess he had made of the job. Since childhood, Wartman had been obsessed with bikes, trikes, and quads. He never stopped collecting and fiddling with them. Along its walls, the warehouse was decorated with mini bikes and dirt bikes that he'd been collecting since his early teens. He would regularly take them out for a spin to keep them fresh, ripping along the few roads that made up the neighborhood as if he owned it. Off in a corner downstairs sat Wartman's pride and joy. A replica Captain America model Harley Davidson from the classic 1969 movie Easy Rider. He had erected a makeshift shrine with the chopper posed in front of two crossed American flags. On the wall hung a leather jacket with an American flag on it. He had a color-coordinated blue and white bandana, straight out of the movie, tied to one of the handlebars. An authentic helmet with the flag motif was perched on the extended sissy bar, as it's known, on the back of the bike. Finally, there was a photo of Wartman riding the bike somewhere, next to someone else riding what looks like the same bike. The story of the bike and the movie it was featured in would provide eerie parallels to Wartman's own life. The original was created for Easy Rider, which debuted in 1969, the same year Wartman was born. The movie starred Peter Fonda, Dennis Hopper, and a young Jack Nicholson, who stole the show, launching his fabulous acting career. Fonda and Hopper played two laid-back hippie drug smugglers, Wyatt and Billy, respectively. Wyatt and Billy were the personification of the new cool more than 50 years ago. Wartman wanted to be seen as cool, too, and in time, the extent to which he leaned on Wyatt and Billy's examples to craft his own mystique would become clear. But for the most part, real life intruded. He made dentures for semi-empty mouths, or those entirely devoid of teeth. That night at the warehouse, Wartman's guest was one of the local women, her name was Cindy. Years earlier, he had told others how much he wanted to get into her pants, 
and those of her daughter, Ocean Mist, as well. He was particularly fond of a series of photos posted by Ocean Mist on Facebook in which she is leaning provocatively over.